Ha 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 ha. It's your boy, MG the Future. Thank you guys for joining me on my channel today. Today is going to be a lovely Friday afternoon cook up. I think we're going to dive into the world of complete FL Studio and maybe we'll hit some of that D Box Zulu magic. Who knows? But it's April 14th, 2023. Hopefully everything's going fine in your life. I'm going to go ahead and start the stream with Amir Obi, Drugs and Camera on. As I share my link, you sit tight. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You know what I'm about. Nice little slow uh, S, I guess, a S curve fade or whatever may have you should be inserted there. My name is MG the Future, and thank you guys for joining me again as a coincidentally 322. I was telling you about these 22s and these 44s, man. They're following me. They're stalking me. But we're going to convert it into music. That's right. Shout out to the chat today. We got Eclipse 66 with the What's Up MG. What's going on with you? Hopefully everything is going well on your end. And hopefully you guys are out there watching, still making bangers. Share them in a Discord. Ayo Kakondo's in the building. What's good, man? Speaking of Discord, Ayo Kakondo put some of those, uh, those profit trap tracks and things, man. You gotta show the people what it's about, for real. Kirkster's in the building. Hail. Killing the Wells, good to see you back. Many blessings, everyone. Mr. Now, live and direct from Italia. Italio, where they say things like, Palazze! Shout out, shout, out to the, shout out to the El Muros out there. Peru on the track, holding it down for Copenhagen, or is it Denmark? Somewhere over there. We deep, we universal, we internationally bound. Let's talk about it. We'll tie the time traveler out of New York. Keeping us up to date with what's going on in these streets for real. It's funny, um, I talk to people down here. A lot of people transplant from up north to Charlotte and Atlanta, etc. So there's a lot of northern people that I um, brush shoulders with, if you will. And they always make comments about like how different the people are. Although like universally, we're kind of the same. Well, we have same tendencies, but we just express it or emote it different. And, they, and the people from here always talk about northerners in such a way like, ah, they're so aggressive, they're crazy. And it's like, damn, you're right. Like, I can't even argue with that. As a person from up north who's lived down here and been back and forth, you know, that's what it's all about. I've, I've done the hokey pokey through the north to southeast my whole life. And I was like, yeah, that's the thing. They crazy. But guess what? So are y'all. Y'all just two different polarities of the same crazy. And it's funny that that conversation has come up a lot recently. Just people, I think people are starting to see the uh, the effects, if you will, of what has happened to us over the past couple of years without going too deep into that. I think um, a lot of these after effects have made people much shorter. So like not short like height, but like shorter in terms of like shorter attention spans, shorter patience wires, um, shorter uh, prerequisites to anger. Like a lot of people get angry faster or, and this is seemingly right. This I'm not, I can't speak for the whole world. I'm just saying from what I'm seeing in a raw, urban fied environment with a lot of people like a lot of people are shorter shorter across all the all the sliders in nba 2k they just push that shit back be angry about nothing i've seen like three or four people today and someone said it could be um pluto and aquarius i have no idea what that means but it caught my eye a couple of days ago so i gotta look into that but yeah i've seen like a couple of people walk by me just shouting at their phone like they on the phone talking to somebody and they're yelling like, they man, they got me messed up. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of everybody out here trying me. And now if you like, objectively, if you look at it, you're like, why is this Negro so passionate on the phone at nine o'clock in the morning? Like everybody don't need to know your business. And that's normally the thing like, wow. But I actually heard what he said. And what he said is what I'm describing. So it manifested in his life as the people around him, he seems like they're, not giving him a hard time, but when, when, they, when people say someone's on you like that, they're saying, like, you're trying to do right and no one around you acknowledges it, right? So he's furious and passionate and, like, you know, you can misread him easily. But if you think about the core of what he's upset about, I think that's what everyone's talking about. It's like, why is everyone so weird? You let me know in the chat if you kind of resonate with that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's where I live. Maybe I need to move again. You know I'll do it. You know I'll do it. You let me know where I should move to because this has been 
um, such an interesting looping trope. Um, I don't bring it up. And that's the craziest. I know they said, like, you know, the life is kind of like a reflection of your thoughts and shit. So that's why I need to know what your experiences are. But in my own thoughts, nah, I be chilling, dog. People be saying stuff. People be like, like it's so weird to be in a city again. Because Raleigh's a city, but Raleigh's not a city where I lived where you'd run into strangers every day. I could run into like five new people every day here. Anyway, very peculiar situation to be in. And um, yeah, everybody's flunked out for real. It's not even a money thing. I'm watching people drive around Beamers and Benzes and trucks and stuff. Cause you know, Charlotte has a lot of um, ballers, like, you know, sports teams and stuff. So a lot of different socioeconomic situations are here. So you see all of it, all of it in one place, almost, almost like a New Jersey or New York. It's really beautiful in that way. But um, across the social spectra, it seems like something is afoot, bro. I can't put my, I can't put better words on it. I want to do the stream today just to create because it's a, there's a there, there, dog. I'm so close to like, you know, you feel me? Like sometimes I just feel like it's right in front of my face and I'm missing it. It's like, holy shit, something, something went wrong. Somebody did this. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know who did it, but somebody did it. This ain't no fucking kumbaya organic moment in human history. None of that bullshit. This is not a discovery channel segment. This is not like the hunter gatherer age boundaries. This something, something happened. Um, and everything's starting to reflect that. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Hopefully you guys are still good after that message. Hate to see it. Ao Kakando says this, I copped the Soul Shots Volume 3 in Trapanese six pack. Thank you, brother, for your support. Robert Brown's in the building. What's good, bro? Ao Kakando says, you so fight. I'll start making samples for Discord. There we go. I am swanky. Music's in the building. Haru says, yes, Denmark. Hey, Detective Mike Lowry. Says, make a God type beat. Yo, I, I haven't seen Mike Lowry in a minute. I know I used to trip on the fact that his name is Mike Lowry, so I remember him. I always remember that. Good to see you back in the stream in the chat, bro. Ock the damn shadow squad. Mr. Now says, just in time for dinner, just cooked the hottest vocals on top of a S6 beat. He made on live on IG. Shout to the plug to the tribe members who are still making music. What a time to be alive. Shogun's in the building. The super mod, he'll slice and dice you. We got to do that again. We got to do that shit right. Hold on. His name is Shogun. And he's a super mod. Both in YouTube chat and Discord. And he will slice and dice you and cut you down under if you start acting like a bot. Welcome. Mr. Now says, check your DM, bros. I sent you some stems. Antonio McKinney, a.k.a. It's AM, the legend. It was really Sam, I think. I'm still kind of confused about this. No, it's not. It's, it's not Sam. I, I used to call it Sam. It was, it's AM. And he, he, would, he would present himself as the copper-colored sun god. Welcome to the chat today. Will Ty says, ninjas done hijacked the electromagnetic spectrum. Peace to the sun gods. Michael Heath is in the building. Tukaveli with the eyes. Tukaveli and me go way back. Way back to Ligon. <laughs> the hip hop forum days. It's, it's so cool that the internet allow, allows you to have connections with people who have a totally different life than you or just doing their own fucking thing. But because of time, like, I can make a reference to him about someone that we both didn't know but knew about in the music realm from some bullshit on the forum and um, both experiencing sound click in the beat stars transitioning and all of that happening in individuals' lives and those individuals still be connected. And just to almost like, not to fact check, but like reinforce the narrative or reinforce the history because nowadays, I don't see too much consistency in the um, the music producer space for real. Like, I thank God for discords and stuff like that where brothers can, like, on some covalent bond, atoms, and electrons type shit. But back in the day, because, I'm, I mean, there's always a lot of beat makers and producers. But I just seem like our communities were more... Solid, I guess. I can't even explain it to you because it's not like real life in that same way. 
It's just like the people you interact with daily was limited back then, 20 years ago. There was only one or two forums, right? And when there's only a couple of forums, most humans flock to the most active. So the main forum is the most people. And then from that, you know, it's divided into subjects and threads. And then from that, you kind of link up based on style and sound and questions. And then it goes from there to instant messenger. And then it progresses from instant messenger to MySpace friends, because you can import, you feel me, or scan the context through your email, whatever it was back then. It just seemed like going through those transitions actually kept us in the same school. It kept us like a class of, you know, class of beat makers 2002. And it's just, it's locked in. Like, it'll always be that. Like, I'll always remember Soul Eternity. And I'll like look up Chris McGill on Facebook and shit be because of that strand. I don't experience that outside of Discord and any other type of endeavor. <laughs> I don't know what humans are clicking up on. Maybe like our... Twitter is a little bit more interesting because you have to talk to people, whereas Instagram is just like photos and maybe comment if you're a creeper. But Twitter is more conversation. So maybe Twitter is kind of like that, too, right now, especially if you had Twitter for a long time. Like I have people on my Twitter that I interact with me for like years. Like years, dog, not random people. That's that's what I'm saying. I feel like there's too many people. <laughs> there we go. It's like, because like even look at the, the sound design stuff, look at the music industry itself, where when take like, so I'm just using these as examples and it's not shade for nobody I mentioned either. I'm just trying to piece this together. Um, so when I was coming up, it was clearly, it was clear that these different producers and these different artists or labels had a sound there's a cohesive thing going on and everyone was able to bring their own sound. And that makes sense because that's the start of something. Hip hop's brand new. It had a whole bunch of chords and bass lines to find later, right? But you can go, the Neptunes produced that for sure. And then if the Neptunes produced something really good and it was a banger in the club or the radio or whatever, they would have a run. But that run didn't stop Timbaland from running whenever him and Aaliyah did something. That run definitely didn't stop Dr. Dre from doing nothing, even when he picked up Eminem. There's like a consistency in the energies represented by these people, whether it's regional, like Los Angeles having their chief, Virginia Beach having a couple of chiefs, because we got Teddy Riley, Danger, Timbo, like, God damn, knots, needles, like, Jesus Christ, dog, like, there's brothers on the underground. I'm drawing blanks, but Jesus. And then, you know, Carolinas and shit like, like that. I forgot where I wanted to go with that. There's distinct lanes for everybody. Then recently, you have like Metro Boomin, who's kind of like that. He kind of lingers through time, even when he's not active, which is cool, right? I guess the people say he's solidified. But when um, your boy, the baby was, who's the baby's producer? T uh, fuck, man. The dude with the hi-hat guy. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I want to say take Keith so bad because that's the next person. But the baby's producer. Jetson made it, Jetson. So you got Jetson and that sound, and it was like, oh, that reminded me of your brother, the white dude that was producing for um, the big, big head beats or whatever, him. Like, that's the same exact kit. It's the same exact bop, but different music behind it, but cool, they have a little run. But then my brain groups them all together as one producer. Like, cause then you'll forget, like, yo, what happened to that kid, Jetson? Yo, is it like Tim Keith had a song with Beyonce? Like, why doesn't he have a whole album out with somebody? Like, he's like, and then they mess you up and they show you like these niggas going to school and stuff. I was like, you go to school for a job. I thought music producer was your career. And then you just see these things like there's just, now there's just like flashes in a frying pan. So much so back to the cultural part. The reason why I know these brothers for a long time it wasn't about the mainstream stuff for real. Like, that's how we bonded with each other. Like, oh, that's the Dr. Dre nigga camp. That's the Kanye West, Dilla type niggas camp. And that's the niggas that like Tritons and synthesizers. That, that was my club with the bouncy drums and the jungle samples and shit. That's the Big Fish audio loops. That's my tribe, for real. And um, it was way more distinct, I guess. And I think that's what helped the longevity of us compared to today where everyone's kind of just 
a mirror of all the same shit almost. Even me now, like just doing the doing the cookups and tutorials out of habit and convenience. I use their kits because someone coming to watch me isn't going to recognize my my my, my signature sound from two thousand seven. They're going to hear, oh, that's the Zaytoven kit. Maybe this nigga know what he's talking about. Ain't he wear a do rag and he low key funny if he want to be. Like, but I have to make sure that there's a resonance there for people to, you know, respect the music that I'm showing and map it to what they're making. So that's, you know, you got you to gotta needle the thread when it comes to creating content for people because of influence, direct and indirect. Because they don't even take my audience. Someone can just copy. Like, oh, I saw what MG did. Let me copy and paste the concept. And then that concept, which is quote unquote my concept or whatever, but that then becomes a norm. And I kind of seen that happen with like lo-fi. Even like when we talk about that, like who really, who like who would you say pioneered the modern lo-fi hip hop movement in terms of like maximum pressure or impact? Like who are your top five lo-fi producers slash influencers, right? Like, and I thought about this. I really thought about it because it was kind of trippy. Um, to go through another phase like that, because we're kind of out of it right now. It's not like lo-fi is dead or went away. It's just not. It kind of did what the 808 did. The 808 kind of landed in club music, and then it kind of went into the streets, you know, the trunk tapes, and then it kind of went into pop. And then, like, we've been complaining about the 808 since 2005 now, 20, almost 20 years later. ain't going nowhere. I think lo-fi kind of did the same thing, the aesthetic, the sample rate, bit rate, depth, tape, static, hiss, foley. I think that's just a staple now, right? So it's bigger than a genre now, for sure. And nobody can nobody cap about that, especially everybody who's using loops from producers or composers who make lo-fi catering, you know, texture. So it's there, it's, it's ingrained, and I'm fine with that. But you can't talk about it like, who did it? Who really did that? You know, everyone starts with Dilla, MF Doom, New Hobbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That back then for sure, because there's a clear line between what they were doing and their audiences and their reach, and what Nelly, Ludacris, Eminem were doing. You could see it. It was different. But you speed it up to the past five years. Who's respond? Who's the best lo-fi hip hop producers? What's the best lo-fi hip hop album? What's your top five lo-fi instrumentals? Who's made the best lo-fi content? Like, though, there's, those are blanks, dog. That's crazy that, that as a group, we keep these concepts, you know, alive somehow, but we don't do it the same like we used to. It used to be different. The hell? It used to be very different. <laughs> and the connections were different because of that. It was a little bit more rigid. Like, there's a little bit more definitive lines, bro. Like, every day I'm starting to feel disrespected on the reels, man, it'd be so crazy watching younger people talk about shit. Like how they talk about Michael Jordan not being the GOAT. But it's not even that. It's because like, bro, niggas used to fight over stuff like this. I think that's what's different. I think people used to get punched in the face a lot more for saying things. And I'm not talking about aggressive or hostile things. I think like if people said something stupid and they stood on it, and then it became this ignorant thing that we typically see online. At some point, somebody's getting punched in the face. And I think that course corrects the DNA or something. Because you never deal with that. I've noticed 99.9% .9 of the people who've been punched in their face have not been repeat offenders. I'm almost certain. I'm, oh, I don't know nary a scenario. Nary a nigga that I had a hit in the face come back to me at any point in life since then with any more drama for my mama. So I know the power in prayer and I know the power in punch. But... The social media thing is, is bizarre because no one's allowed to have a popular opinion or a fixed opinion. And then on the other side of that, because it's so loose, people can't even justify their opinions. And that's where someone like me, more mental, gets lost. Because I could be ignorant, I could be wrong, but you want to know why I am. I'm going to go from point A to point B with your ass, and if you find a flaw in that, you can help me out. But if you don't find a flaw in that, what are we talking about? You just disagree and disagree. The worst part is when people throw out opinions like <laughs> such and such is better than Michael Jordan. And I'm like, nigga, how? What is your corroborating support, evidence, cultural moment, specific personal tropes? Who signs your first autograph? Is none of that shit. Is none of that feeling shit. It's just I said it just because I can say it. 
And I'm all for free speech and saying what the fuck you want to say or saying what the fuck you need to say. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about saying shit just to be saying shit. And that's kind of like now our cultural norm. It's the phenomenon. It's like, it's it's not, tr- it's like you, it, I, bitch, I thought it was trolling. But now, now maybe that's the thing. Maybe the trolling subculture hooked and like trolling is just part of our social dynamics now. And, um, but what I'm saying is these people are very passionate trolls and they just said that someone said like Michael Jackson wasn't a legend. And I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Like I should punch you in the face. Not because Michael Jackson's my favorite artist. Cause he's not, I'm not a Prince Michael Jackson type of nigga at all. I respect their craft. I have favorite songs. I have favorite sounds and influences of that, but I don't wake up like Siri, <laughs> play that MJ playlist. That's not me, but I'm sensible enough to know that you just can't be that type of asshole and take away the fact that he is a legend. Fuck all that bullshit you want me to be on. The fuck are you talking about? Like, how do we move that goalpost to that rigid line in, in terms of the social dynamic, not the content? Who gives a fuck who's a legend for real? Like, if you want to go there, kumbaya, stoic and shit. No, nigga, I'm talking about, but for real, I remember culturally, we were we were way more concerned about authenticity and we were way more concerned about some semblance of truth. Even if the gatekeepers or the business side wasn't the truthers, at least the artists were. Um, and you would think the fans are, you know, the niggas that be on the corner debating their top threes. You would think within that, especially, this, and this is probably the northerner in me, like you could sit in a cipher with people who have hostile opposing points and you know that's okay because at some point it's going to turn into ah nigga ah, I got your ass like it's it's going to that that tension turns into laughter and then everything's downloaded and even if that person's right wrong or indifferent it's like so what nigga because it was about the energy right and and this and I'm sorry I have to I have to bifurcate to to flow in and out of what the problem is I'm trying to describe to you like describing a scenario to you so simple that you understand and can visualize what I'm talking, but I'm actually talking about the energy, that loop that happens when when you speak, you spit fire concepts, ideas, or norms, and everyone has to, it's like a voting, pro, it's like a due process is what I'm saying. Like there's a due process that happens culturally, especially amongst black people, and like once it gets the stamp of approval from whoever the, the hundredth monkey is, that's our thing, like that's our jazz. I don't give a fuck what no one else is talking about. We know these niggas, like, Whitney Houston, don't talk about it. Michael Jackson, don't talk about it. It don't matter if they're one, two, three, four, five. At that point, you understand what I'm saying? There was a cohesive understanding that even if you didn't like it, you just shut the fuck up because there's, you know, in an honest way, there's no one you could suggest that is better. Even if you like them better, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Now, apply that type of... collaboration for we're collaborating with each other for truth or or the truth right because maybe there's maybe in this universe nothing is true and i'm starting to appreciate that especially if you could just modify it with a few thoughts and ideas right whatever that means but maybe the truth there's things that we agree upon our our northern uh our northern light or our, the drinking gourd if you will and i'm talking about culture now right i'm talking about energy and culture there's no longer this central point no more. Um, and, and in hip hop and beat making, it's easy to point it out. Like it's really easy. Like you don't have a Dr. Dre right now. You really don't. We have Timbaland, he's still here and he's converting to my space, you know what I'm saying? The stuff that people like me do, but he's not Timbaland the way that he was to music. But at the same time, there's not another Timberland to replace him in that same capacity. That is, I'm talking about, I'm talking about roles, not, not genius, not success. I'm talking about just the role, the energy role, the chiefdom, the empty seats in Congress is what I'm talking about. Is this an energetic thing? Congress is energy. And, um, in any human society or substructure, strata, discord thread, there's a hierarchy and people fill into positions. If you run a Discord for two months, somebody's going to ask you to be a mod. 
This is a this is this is what I'm talking about. This is a northern light approach. If you're a content creator and you're communicative with your chat, someone's gonna step up and wanna mod. There's no reason for that though. You know what I'm saying? It's not a prerequisite, it's not a requirement. No one's ever had this conversation, but everyone knows these people need mods. These people need to um be fucking assholes and contrarians so people can laugh. These niggas need to post a bunch of spam links just so you know it's active. These people need to post struggle beats and act like it's so hard when they're not taking any of the advice you give them. Like, you know, the, you get what I'm saying? These are seats. These are energetic roles. Um, and it's not about the individuals. It's about you need these types of individuals for the circuit to go because they play a role. It, they're not supposed to get better. They're not, you know what I'm saying? You, I, we can't pick who that is, but what I'm saying is in this example, that role isn't about them becoming a better producer in that moment it serves you they may be in that role for a year or two and then five years later that everything just set in for them right but because they're in this community and this congress the you know what i'm saying they create different loops and different problems that affect everyone in terms of what we think about what we agree upon and the fact that i have to keep explaining this shit to people is not about the information i'm repeating it's about these people are getting me to explain it even better, even simpler. It's like, all right, so y'all niggas didn't understand me the first 20 times. Think about that process as like a computer process or what they're trying to suggest as AI and machine learning is. Like if you, if you dare to do that, you start to see that a lot of this human shit is machine learning, right? And, and maybe it's like, you know, our imitating life vice versa because we're humans, the things we design necessarily have to come from a human natural cause perhaps like we're just emulating what we think we understand about ourselves so maybe it's not creepy maybe it's not like chicken or the egg is it human is it ai maybe it's neither maybe the technology does that to us uncanny valley effect because we're emulating ourselves in it but but whatever the case is right because i kind of believe ai is older than who we are but um even so humans first ai second we process, we, 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 we work in call centers or Walmarts or businesses or offices and all of our energy comes together just like a node tree in a network, right? And you've been in these situations where you, you're scanning your hard drives or your file locations for a file that's supposed to be there and that file ain't fucking there. But you know, like, yo, maybe this file could have ended up in this folder for some fucking reason. That's kind of how, like, people are. You would think you raise your hand and ask Dr. Dre, hey, Dr. Dre, I want to know. What's the best EQ and compressor combination to get this style of Atlanta trap, rapidly dap polo snare to pop? And Dre is looking at you like, nigga, in what part of my catalog have I done that? But he still might give you an answer. Whereas someone just listening around who's just been between Miami, Atlanta, Los Angeles, and he happened to be in the same studio at the same time, he's gonna sit there and tell you exactly what it is. Oh yeah, what we do out there is like, we put the distressor and the compressor and the filter, whatever, whatever, turn it up, waves in a less it, say less it, you feel me? And then Dre's looking at the nigga like, yo, that sounds like some shit I can compute to my hardware setup. Oh shit, I'm gonna take that, I ain't gonna say nothing, right? Cause that's how old heads are. But the person, I asked Dr. Dre this question. But this nigga had to answer. And, and, and that's why you need more people. Because everyone, every folder doesn't have the file you're looking for. It's just be like that. I don't know why. The, the, the people you think you should be able to go to for something, they, they're just there, of course, for whatever they serve. But it's because they're connected to other people that makes them really attractive to you. And you're not conscious of that. A lot of people, like, and, um, and we, we kind of get caught up in, um, especially me, because of like narcissism and stuff. That shit's real scary to me because I didn't realize, I never appreciated what it was. I didn't know it was a vampire type of, I didn't, I didn't know that it was dangerous. I thought it was just like niggas is arrogant. Nah, but when you look at energy and people manipulating their narcissistic shadow self, um, <laughs> that's about to get real deep. Let me slow down. Let me, let me, I'm supposed to be making beats and shit. Let me slow the fuck down. I'm not trying to solve all the world's problems. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck happened and why we're even conscientious of this transition. Like, it's the fucking weirdest thing. It's like slowly clicking up a roller coaster, and the higher you get, the more of the park you see. 
Like, yeah, this is a scary thing. We're about to go over and shit. That's that's the hoorah of it. But your your awareness of your environment changes at the same time. Especially when you're about to get into flight or flight and shit. Like, when you know your adrenaline's about to rush and all of a sudden your vision's a little bit sharper. So you can see the bitch at the goddamn popcorn stand with the fat ass and you zoom in on it. You're like, holy shit. You could be standing on the ground and you wouldn't have been able to do that. But it's this mixture of things happening. Elevation, energy, adrenaline, whatever. I kind of, um, as I'm telling you guys this, whatever the fuck it is, that's what it feels like. It feels like we're going through that together. Like, it's no one person's fault. And, and I guess back to the narcissist. It's not narcissism and narcissist's fault. It's that humans, or whatever we are, or whatever this experience is, we, re we, we, ah, we require one another, but more importantly, once we're connected and accept that, we re require specific folders and instructions for all of us to function as a collective. In your individual my player mode, it's a different thing, because you, you know, you're a drop in the ocean for real, and you're just navigating seemingly by yourself. But if you look at us as a circuit board, if you look at us as machine learning, you can tell socially they've been uninstalling or unscrewing the fixed instruction sets that made all this progress, the fixed instruction sets that gave us, quote unquote, the first black president, the instruction sets that gave us hip hop, and not just hip hop and pop, but like number one music that everyone can gain agreement on, at least to the effect that if it's on, you know what it, you know what time it is. May not be your favorite thing because you're a miserable fucking loser, but you know, like yo, it's Christmas. Where the fuck is Mariah Carey? I can't stand that song, but you know. But you fucking know it's supposed to be on, though. You know when you walk into Macy's and you're trying to do your last-minute Christmas shopping, you're supposed to hear, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. you fucking know. Like, that don't pivot for nobody. You notice what, that, what I'm saying is, whatever the fuck that is versus what we have, bro. Something, somebody did this. I'm, I'm on their head, bro. I ain't off of that. I'm still not off of it. It's bothering me, though. Because everyone knows. Shout out to Mr. Now, Ty in the building. Ninjas done made a show for music producers. So much of your music story is my story and we're miles apart. Shout out to Kirkster. Thank you for the confirmation. Will Ty says, try to avenge quality using Moorish time manipulation techniques. I haven't even went to the fucking fifth dimension trying to fix this universe. I've been trying to shift out of it though. Not death, I'm talking about like shift to a different dimension because this shit is obviously this is the most ghetto paradigm I lived through. This shit is like 1994, 1998, and a little bit of 2007 all at the same time for me. Like, I'm talking about the tempo of time, the way it feels, the, the moods I'm normally in. It's like an old skipping loop almost, like a Fibonacci loop of energy. And I'm like, this shit is ghetto. This is like the most boring times of my life. And I appreciate, listen now, don't get me the fucking mind. I appreciate the boring times more than some of the other ones. Even the ones when I was too turned up, I it, it, one and done, nigga. Like, I like a little, you know what I'm saying, predictability in my life. But shit is predictable. And then it's like this uh, fucking, just listen to our music. Y'all heard the new Drake song yet? You see what I'm saying? Like, no one's talking about that. Is there even a new Drake song tutorial? It should have been on TikTok already. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're losing... We're losing the bolts or the instructions or the folders or something. The server is down. Someone crashed the server. It's something off. It's weird. David Treasure, yo tribe. Tell when mechanic says, why am I still here? I thought I was going to get phased out. Anyway, a tower moment peaked. Didn't really come to any kind of conclusion yet. Up, oh, yep. Tell when mechanics. I don't, I don't like the way you said, why am I still here? I'm glad you're still here. You went through a tower moment. I know what that means, and you're here, and that means you passed, so what the fuck are we talking about? You don't have a conclusion yet. Well, if you share the story with me, I bet you I'll find one. My goddamn super processor, useless, <laughs> you know, it's funny. This, this fact, this is funny as fuck. <laughs> I'll say it like this. I, I, I normally wouldn't tell this story. It's music production related. 
the, the, the kid that does my voice tag, Jerry, his father, rest in peace, Jerry, he was a cop and he was a Freemason. And um, I had to be about 10 years old or so, 10 or 11, when I met Jerry. And Jerry was quiet. He had like that cop energy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I really fuck with him off a of rip, you know what I'm saying? I'm from up north, so it was like we had a like I said, a different conclusion when it comes to policy enforcers. Cause they're supposed to be God and the devil at the same time. But anyway, Jerry was talking a little bit, but he was really paying attention to me, talking to my aunt, who's a grown woman, like he's a grown man. And my aunt, this aunt in particular, always gave me freedom to like I didn't have to code switch to a child with her. I could just talk shit to her like a homie. Um, anyway, so we're talking, we're building about something. I remember being on her computer trying to do a website for her on like the free HTML builders or some shit. And I was like, made this little flash animation for her real quick and updo- uploaded the Swift and all. Anyway, and for some reason, mind you, I'm a 10 year old. I didn't think nothing of it. I came back and I think it was my aunt or her son, my cousin told me, it's like, yeah, my mom or she was saying how smart you are. And um, basically she was proud of how smart I was. And she was saying it to him, to Jerry. And Jerry was like, he ain't smart. He just know a whole bunch of facts. <laughs> and like, it was the craziest fucking riddle in my life, dog. Like, I have no idea why in, as a 10 year old, that shit was a fucking pin to tail on a donkey moment where I had to carry that fortune cookie forever because he never told me that. It came through my family. My family had to deliver that message to me. And I, I didn't think I was smart anyway in that, in that sense. It was just that, that, that he, he, he set me a stumbling block. Um, the fact that you just know a lot of facts. So how do we go beyond, and this is what AI's problem is gonna be too. AI just has a database of facts. I think when me and BusyWorks was talking about AI, BusyWorks was kind of highlighting this point too. What about the cultural phenomenons that you had to be hipped into culture to realize why this freestyle is important? AI can't do that because it's just a bunch of facts. And sometimes the facts are wrong. So much so that you require in a freedom of information age, fact checking. You know what I'm saying? Fact checking isn't checking niggas just saying shit. Fact checking is like, nah, we need to we need to make sure this is correct, even if it's not about authenticity. It just needs to be consistent so that everyone can use this as an anchor in their judgment or their filtering going forward. Whether or not they're really selling crack and buying prostitutes, that's the fact is that they're grown ass men. They did the fuck they want, but on the record. For the future, we cannot, we cannot put on the record as a fact that that was a crack hole in your Senate. Because what does that speak to the future and to the kids or whoever is supposed to replace us? Maybe, maybe it's like a human pride thing. I don't fucking know. But it, so sometimes facts are wrong. Sometimes facts are skewed. Um, and and, I, and then I think his appreciation for what smart means, in contrast to someone who knows a lot of information is what really kind of like got me going for the rest of my life to make sure I just wasn't a person that could just read stuff and remember it or talk and hear stuff and remember it, but actually be able to use it. That That's the that's the switching point. That's the stepping point. It's like once you know all this shit, and, and I'm speaking to you as a beat maker, you only have to be so smart to make good beats. But you probably have way more facts than any other producer before you would ever have had in the same time, position, and scale. You have way better sounds. You have way better like sources and your manuals are better. They have pictures now. They're in color. So many different things change. Like y'all don't really need no more facts. Um, Cause there's a very big difference between facts knowing a lot of facts and actually being smart. Being smart is taking the facts that you need 
to build what you want to achieve. That's smart. Smart isn't complicated. Smart is actually simple. So my apologies if I ever confused you for someone smart, but now I'm getting better at it. Way better. Lex Luger to Cavelli. People were outside, outside. Exapil 100, yo, trolling was impossible in person. That's a fact. But though people tried it, though. Trust me, I know them. Thank you, Will, says fights are chat GPT for mental tardation. Eclipse says there's power in the punch. <laughs> Double O said <laughs> the new school tried what we did back in the day, but they put it a twist on it and help with MF Doom dying. Plus, new school went back to research it. Yeah, I did see that acquired. That happened, too. Off the damn shadow says power punch. Put that on a T-shirt. That's funny. William Sharp says MJ is the definition of a legend. <laughs> Will Ty says the sheer disrespect. Kirkster says disrespecting any of the MJs make me live it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Michael Jackson, Jordan, Game Six, or whatever Jay was saying. Oh man. Maybe we gotta put a J in our name to be famous. Let's talk about it one day. Tailwind Mechanic says trying to Mandela affect Jordan or Jackson is pure disrespect. That's a fact. But what will the record say? What will the facts say? You get, you get why this shit is trippy as fuck? Because me and you and the people alive today know, you know what I'm saying? But we're watching the new generation talking about they don't know. So what happens in 50 years when we're too old to argue or whatever, and they're now us in the same role talking to their future generation about what their facts are when they're just living on a whole different codified structure? That's why niggas believe... Christopher Columbus discovered America. Like, you know how many retarded motherfuckers grew up in America saying that dumb shit? Printing it in textbooks, teaching it on plays, like motherfuckers sending packets home, like doing feasts and festivals in November, wild ass disrespectful as fuck, right? The whole culture, the whole education system ran with some shit. Some weird ass, hybrid ass nigga from Europe discovered the fucking biggest continent on the planet and shit. Like the fuck are you talking about? Like, what the actual fuck are you talking about? And it's not like that wasn't being pushed simultaneously with the niggas manipulating Aether. Like, niggas was flying in Zeppelins, and this is the shit that you think they believed? But then when you actually slow it down, and you understand that niggas is playing in your fucking face, the fact is, Christopher Columbus discovered America because of the doctrine of discovery. Christopher Columbus claimed the Gulf regions and islands for the church. That is technically discovery. That is not, oh shit, we've been on this planet together and we don't know who's over there. But off of that one fact, everyone then put in their mind state for everything else they received that, oh, well, the people that were here were these people and uh, in the flood and uh, and the black people have to be from Africa like all of that comes from Columbus all of that comes from that fact being bent just a little bit it was doctrine of discovery not discovery channel niggas and then that changes the whole story because then you have to go okay 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 so what is doctrine of discovery again and then all of a sudden all the black people who were like from the 60s onward right when the liberal citizens of college and shit all them niggas was looking for what is our salvation? What will be our uh, erecting our status in white America? All that dumb, goofy shit that our grandparents and grand aunts witnessed or went through was all off the premise that this nigga discovered America. But if these same niggas knew that was full of shit because their grandmothers knew it was full of shit, they would say, nah, they put the doctrine of discovery on America. And that's why we're slaves. Then you can fix the actual problem. Wait, why was I enslaved? Did I come from Africa? Was I enslaved in place, nigga? Yes. How? Who? The church. You mean the church I go to every Sunday? Yes. Then you can actually fix the problem because you have the facts. The reason why nothing's been fixed in music, nothing's been fixed in black culture, nothing's been fixed in America is because we have been co-opted by some agenda to create a factless society. That's the problem with teaching niggas. That's the problem with being smart. That's the problem with trying to course correct what you know are facts. You need people who care about facts. And we're fucked because of that. There's no facts. There's no facts, bro.
There's no more facts. There's no more 100 emojis. Everybody's just fucking freestyling right now. And I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about like in politics, in the banking world. Like if you listen to how they're talking, bro, those people ain't supposed to sound like that. They sound like they ain't got no facts. The crypto people, you know, they're really good at supporting Bitcoin and stuff and getting people adopted and enrolled and teaching the process. And if you're into the betting version of it, there's great people there and they had facts. But then you ask them, so what about now? Because I'm up right now. No one got an answer. You can't induce or deduce a conclusion based on the data we're giving because the data is not coming from these fixed points of facts no more. That's why it's harder to sort. You would think AI would make this transition a little bit easier to understand, but it can't because this database of facts or half of them are fraud. So even if you get the best AI to have the best idea, what's going to fuck everybody up and everything up for real, I'm talking about when they try to automate it for business, is that this motherfucker doesn't know what the fuck facts means. AI doesn't have nigga logic, dog. That's why it'll never work. That's why it'll never be sentient. That's why you never have to be scared of it. I've come to my final conclusion. AI ain't going to be shit. AI is going to be a big puff of smoke. It's going to auto automation is going to be kind of scary because but the, we knew we we're going to a robotic nobody in McDonald's world anyway. AI will help that. AI will help do the boring, repetitive, lazy nigga shit that we don't want to do anyway. I don't know why we're complaining. Like, let that 40 hour week dumb shit go. I'm talking about spiritually, mentally. So the universe will hurry up and give it to you wherever your collective motherboard wants to go, which obviously it wants to go to automated um, so much so that they can automate banking for you. They can automate trading for you. Y'all not thinking about this. AI can do everything that you learned how to do, but it can't figure out facts. It can't figure out novelty. It can't really figure out how to really make you laugh when you're the one not laughing in the audience. That requires nigga logic. You've never heard of that because I ain't put it on a t-shirt yet. But I have come to the humble conclusion, and I think me and the brother Will Ty have shared sentiments in this theory, that there's something about black people in America. I give you a perfect example of nigga logic at work. And I'm not being racist or funny. If you're sensitive like that, cut it out. Because shit's about to get worse than this. But you'd be reading about a crime. <laughs> Headline on Twitter, and it'd be like, such and such man kidnapped his wife and put her in a truck and left her in the lake and left the kids. Some wild, crazy, horrific story. Nigga logic goes, ain't no way no nigga did that. There's ain't no way a nigga is going to sit there and put a fucking Escalade in the lake. That's nigga logic. We're not, we don't need the facts of the case to solve it. That's called, in other words, quantum computing. We don't... Most of us, even when we're freestyling and rapping, we don't need the database. We don't need the database of facts because we have nigga logic. And that's why a lot of people hate us. And they've hated us for 400, 500, 600 years. It's for, it's from, it's, they don't hate us from like actions and shit. They hate us from how we think and how we talk back. So like, if you're running game on us for real, like, you know, the bigger games get run on us because it's systemic and they use one of our sentinels or coons to bring us in. But without that sentinel, none of that ever happens. There's niggas who are still being the niggas they were today from 500 years ago that they haven't reached. You go to the islands, you go to South America, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But there's a code, there's a way that we process information that doesn't deal with the facts at all. And you see it every time I do a daily. Like, I don't know that people appreciate the fact that I'm literally freestyling. I have nothing written down. I didn't practice. This is not usually what I'm thinking about prior either. Matter of fact, so much of what I say, I don't remember because it's a different thing happening, right? It's, you know, the way my mind, you know, compartmentalizes facts. So imagine that. Niggas could talk to me and swear me up and down a cliff about anything that I say, right? I could produ I produce a fact and people are like, that's wrong. Fact check. I'm like, damn, Minority Report got me. But all I got to do as a quantum computer is just wait. Repeat until. And then new facts emerge, don't it? And it gets to a point because you're so worried about the facts. In order to prove me wrong, when these new facts come, 
Where are you going to tell me I'm right? And that never happened. No one ever tells me I'm right when I'm right. And, and you probably experienced that too. Because it's something about, I don't know, something about people, something about our roles. Like we can't, I don't know. It's weird. It's probably a defense mechanism. But still, the fact of the matter is I still be fucking right. <laughs> I'm right in the future. I'm not right right now. I'm about to be right, nigga. MG, the future. If I'm not right right now, I'm about to be right. That's been my whole life. I'm about to be right. But for someone like my mind and my brain, it has to have nuance. It has to have a touch of nigga logic in it in order to be confident and repeat that process. You cannot do it based on facts alone. And that's why AI can't, AI can't, AI ain't that. They don't, even, they don't even talk about what that is yet. They demonize us and call us all kinds of names and witches and bitches and all kinds of shit. You know our story. If you're watching my face, you know what they talk about. You, you know what's so crazy? As a person who's one of these people, as a, I'm talking about a black American. I'm not talking about a black person in the world. I'm talking about, as, like, we got that problem too, but the black American story. Not one person on this planet has a optimistic, positivic, um, leaning towards a positive polarity bias for us. Now think about it. If you're not a black American, you don't have in your life and experience what that bias is like when it's reflected to you from others, especially when it's reflected from others who are black like you. Think about how crazy and trippy that is for a minute for all my non-black people. And then for my black people who've been on the receiving end of that energy, realizing that at least no one in this country actually relates to you. You've been criticized the whole time about how you talk, about how you ask a question, about why you sag your pants, why you smoking weed, why you doing all this shit. It's like motherfucking 24 hour surveillance on a human level. Like everybody who's not us has to question. And I think for me, it gets disrespectful because I know we were here already. And I know it was doctrine of discovery. And I know it was brute force and violence and religious zeal that converted us over to whatever this state is. So I can imagine how beautiful and majestic we really were before the fuck shit occurred. And that's kind of fucking disheartening. But think about our class of people <laughs> in the biases and boxes that are put on us, and we still have to operate high functionally and provide all of the novelty to the system that did it to us. So we're like a hijacked server. They plugged us into a network we never needed. They plugged us in to get access to resources or facts. They needed more uh, diversity, if you will. And you could prove this just in the economic structure. Like, oh, look at all those jigaboos dancing on the porch. These cause porch monkeys and moon crickets. Like, these are really blatant, flippant insults, dog. And they used to tell that to our famous people. They told that to light-skinned people with good hair, whatever the fuck that means. And then once the jigaboos was finished jigabooing, they find a white version jigabooing, call it a different name, make it famous, give it money, blow it up, and then boom, it's pop. Super Soaker Dude, NASA Chicks, everywhere we go, at least in this constraint, our energy has been zapped for the multiplicity generation of whatever the fuck this really is, for real, for real, for real, for real. And it's no wonder that most of us are tired. Literally, the witch or the devil has been riding our back my entire life. And no one wants to talk about that. If they talk about reparations for us, reparations is not a fact issue matter. Reparations are owed, period. Do regular white people today owe it? No, but the corporations that benefit from it do. If you want to use the word and its definition and what it means and justice and shit, but you notice know, like you can't vote for no black people to actually push for that. And all those black people with those nice white friends wearing Kwanzaa outfits and stuff, they don't show up to talk about it either. So it's like, so we just not, we want to ignore it. You don't wait for the Moors to get more databases and more facts to kind of find out why you're not doing it. But instead of you just saying it and freeing people up from that expectation, you can continue to pander and manipulate them for your actual agenda, which is to take them out of the system altogether. That's fucking demonic. No matter how you slice it, but you require a certain perspective, nigga logic, to see it that way. And that's why when we argue, or our female counterparts, when they tap into this energy, 
Niggas get really like, yo, what the fuck? Quiet down, calm down. Nigga, they're loud because they're telling the truth. But we're in a universe where there's no such thing. What a time to be alive. Mr. Now, you need a resistance in the circuit. Find the right ohms. There you go. B Juggernaut says chat NGTF. Thank you. Come on now. Let's talk about it. I was here before they were. Rashane is in the building. What's up? Rogue status. Yo, happy Friday, everybody. MG, good to see you, homie. Squad. Atlas Beats with the 499 donation. Thank you for tapping in. Thank you for the super chat. Atlas Beats. Everybody drop a like on the video. It's quickly turning into a 3 a.m. I'm sorry. You know, you notice I didn't have a fixed graphic, though. I knew the spirit of me knew I'd be on my bullshit if y'all let me talk. Rogue Sass says, Mr. Now, otherwise, okay, we got Dablo. Shout out to Isabella, heading down from Switzerland. Yeah, that's it. Deontay, J -C, J -C, mm, Deontay DJC is in the building. Shogun says, they mud flooded society. Mm. B. Jargonaut says, that's something to marinate on. Eclipse says, LOL, Fugusta El Neil, laughing. What's up, Big Tez? Pat Lee's in the building. Shogun's in the building. Fire emojis. But yeah, how you guys feeling? What's, what's been on your mind lately? Is the Lakers or something? I know something basketball happened. What's up? What the fuck is up for real? Y'all let me know. You know, I could talk forever because it's not me. Shit, I would talk about. Ain't that. Does this have, no, this doesn't have categories because that'd be convenient. That's cool. It don't sound real. It sounds better. It sounds like high quality. They, they're talking about how high quality reactor synths are. It's high quality, but it doesn't sound like... It's trying to. You can hear it panning, though. I guess that's why it doesn't come across real. Whoa. The aftertouch on this bitch, though, is crazy. MPE might be nasty, too. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, the real the real synthesizers have a hard time doing that trick. What? That keyboard nasty. The, the going the the, the I don't even think of it anyway. The response is crazy. It's buttery. It's motherfucking crazy. Guess what guess what though? Free loops can't record. That's what the fuck's the point. Every time I put in the free loops, it's like 20 beats off. Like, okay, bitch. Fix your metronome timing in my loop back. Um, hmm. What is it called? Complete control. I have one of their new expansions. I have the affiliate link too in my description of my video. They have that whole summer sale they do. I finally got plugged into the Native Instruments side of things, which is interesting given the history. But everything's full circle. And I knew it would happen when I told the story. I'm not always right in real time. I'm just not right yet. Then I end up being right. And it scares me a little bit, guys, because I don't know what the fuck that is for real. I just be talking shit. I'm trying to figure it out just like everybody else. I have no idea what the fuck is going on for real. I just have like this deep feelings and knowings about shit that's based on my nigga logic. It has nothing to do with what I went to school for. No one taught me this. This is just built into my operating system. And I realize a lot of my people have it for other areas that they care about. They don't have it for everything. They have it for, if you talk to a, a drug dealer, if you talk to a hustler or something, they're some of the smartest fucking people on the planet. Like the way their mind puts together problems and solves, <laughs> you know, the way that niggas put shit together to get around shit, the loopholes. What chat GPTs are you being used for now? Oh my God, brothers are brilliant. Don't let me get on the sisters either. 
Most of your scam, most of your scammers are women. Let's talk about it. They're fucking clever. There is a string there. Oh yeah, that's another thing too. Shout out to the brother Mr. Now. He's using ChatGBT to run averages on legends in their music catalog. And there's a fringe discovery, if you will, that your top artists, not all artists, your top artists and their top songs are usually in the key of their Zodiac. So Michael Jackson, C major, A minor, Virgo. Uh, Stevie Wonder had the same, all them niggas. All them astrologer ass music ass niggas made the a bulk of their successful records in their key. So you should find out what your signs are, and then you'll probably find out what key you should be in. And I just said that as I'm gravitating towards the transpose. Sounds about right. What? Why do I want to do that by hand, though? I can't do it that fast. Chord, but I don't feel like I got it. I feel like I play it slow. I don't know how slow. Yeah, I'm one of them. times that's cool that's cool that's okay wah, wah. okay <clears throat> no sir can't see that shit come on fruity loops your low contrast head ass all right no thank you no no. Where are you starting it? Yeah, it's still off. Fuck. This is what Studio One used to do. That's what made me stop using Studio One. Can't slur them. See if we get a sound that I like. What's up in the chat though? Pat Lee's in the building. Heath says, bro, my FL latency hurts my soul. My gay says for real, for real. Shout to Soul 100. Greetings, Earthlings. Oh no, he's going D minor on us. We got to. Got to tap into the Sagittarius side of things. Sagittarius part is lovable, but it's my Scorpio stellium that makes me the bad guy. That's why I know all the Drake fortune cookie lyrics. What the fuck? How do you change? I don't know. <laughs> That's almost perfect. 
That's perfect for what I would do to life. Now I can play 20 chords around it. the type I'm the type that could do that though a lot of people are afraid to do that pussy but um you can you can play any chord you want around your arpeggiator you don't have to play the chord of the arpeggiator at all but you'd have to be brave uh-huh and I'm brave enough for all of us let's go short though I don't want it like clogging up the the stereo space let's see that word let's see that word let's see that word let's see that word don't play with me what is that tool that for loops got I know it's uh, limit or legato. It's something. Quick legato. God damn it. There we go. Yes. No, but yes. Okay. No, sir. No, sir. We need them shorter. What key is that? Ah. Wrong way, foe. Okay. Slur, please. Whatever, it'll work. That's crazy. I need bass. How low can you go? Then it's just not cloud supply. Cyclops. Then why are you in that database, ho? Bring me massive. No, nigga. You playing. Now you're being... facetious. Why do I try? What? What? What in the African, Jamaican? What is going on?
That's like my favorite bass in um, Omnisphere, for real. The Boomer Square. But that ain't a Boomer Square. That's a bird sub. Got him! <laughs> Are you serious? I thought Omnisphere was the only one I could do that with without trying to make it. Oh my God. I wish I knew how to play for real though. find that last chord because I made it up. Catch them Cali niggas one day on the walk downs. I'm, I'm two chat GPTs away from the walk down course I need, and it's over for the rest of the United States. I got the Southeast and Northeast, okay. I can sample, I can do this, I can do RB, but you let me, you let me figure out my selection walk down. Them niggas is toast. I'm coming for your head, dog. That's it. I can only walk down two steps before I lose the plot. But soon I'm gonna walk up and down this bitch. Moonwalking, Michael Jackson style. No hashtag, no legend. I need to slow that down, Walty. supposed to stop it. That's correct. That's it. Where are you at? Where are you at? I don't know about that one, Chief. can't find it and gone. I can't find it. It's a blue, whatever they call a blue note. It's not really that, but it's supposed to be that. Anyway, anyway, moving along. I might just have to quantize that bass line as soon as I put the goddamn drums on it. Let me put a, let me put a snare clap in there. Because you know my metronome lying to me. I know Fruity Loops when I record lying to me, so I might as well make my own. Yeah, okay. So with the fucking clap, that pocket, that lazy bass is cool. That means the kick is going to fuck up the game, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm alright with that. What? Hold on, one more time. Oh, I need more. I want 
the shit so spaces you do whatever the hell you want you do whatever the hell you want let's bring some of that back chat gpt though really high key low key they don't need to persist like that there's no reason for it to persist there's no fucking reason what is that called big question what 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 tell me no back here boy pause is it recorded it records it yes jesus oh yes uh, but you on now you on loop you goofy as hell you goofy bro fruity loops why is goofy. It's 
it's mad convenient, but it's mad goofy. Shout out Yang for the filter it tip. I just could listen to that loop forever on like a like a Tekken stage select or something. I feel like Tekken stage select needs this. What in the Trapanese is this kid doing? Don't know. We don't know yet, do we? Come on, people. That's so weird. They really make music like this. They ain't fucking with me, are they? They really go through these folders and be like, yeah, that's what's hot in the streets. You California niggas is different. I don't, my brain don't register none of those textures. I didn't know I needed that many. Let me see something. the song if I can get the drums right ah what is these called Some drums right nigga let's go I need my rim shots Percussion is probably the most important ever in life. This is the first time you introduce people to your bounce, and that has to be perfect. Everything before that first fucking snare is everything. If you, if you fudge that, they're not gonna like the rest of it. This has to be right. That one can go on the end. Like that. But I need that first one to be catchy. I don't know, Chief. It's not sharp enough. I don't need those in 12 keys.
sense. It was so much easier to do these type of beats when I memorized all my sounds and all my folders. Then my brain would just go, perk 33504, like the fuck? Now that that's done, I'll come back to that later. Now I need loops. Give me my hi-hats, ho. Ooh, few brothers got hi-hats, don't they? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they do. They really do. Have everything else I need here. Okay, all right, all right. Miss me with the other shit. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, all right, all right. No Glorilla. Let's make sure that goddamn the damn downbeat. Don't play with me, ho. I'll shift it if I want to. I think that's it. I feel like you, I feel like, no, I feel like there's something off, and it is, obviously, way the fuck off, brother, stretch, father, stretch my pants. I'll be God level. But you know, goddamn well I ain't about to do that. I'm gonna try though. I'm gonna try for the future, for the kids, for the culture. I'm gonna try to do this with no quantize, cause that's what those little Los Angeles niggas be doing. And they think I don't be hearing them, I just don't say nothing. It's like you I sit in class and I pay attention. I was like, I see what y'all niggas is doing. I just don't feel like doing it. But if I feel like doing it, I'm doing it. And y'all ain't gonna be to say nothing. You knew you or your mammy neither. Let's go. Give me my um flute track. Oh, I had 
had him I had a fudge finger to shit. Now my now my fingertips instantly want to sweat and shit. I ain't got time. What in the hell? What the hell? Let's go. That's it. They plug in that Roland Juno, put it on a guitar pedal, and just go crazy for no reason. And they think I don't know it's the Juno. I've been new. just keep stacking that goddamn piano because they can't help themselves they don't play new keys ever they just keep stacking shit and they change the cadence or voicing of it but they don't change those the notes like the coolest thing about being a dope music producer is that you don't need to know the music theory as much as you need to know what sounds go together and why the fuck i can't load any goddamn new presets in this bitch Oh, please exit it. Oh, Lord Jesus. Why y'all playing with me? I'm getting towards the end of the match here, and this, it wants to fuck around and find out with me. Uh, 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 uh. Give me my browser, bitch. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Really? No ups, no downs, nothing. Just, just vibes right now. Just vibing together, wasting my time. Okay, one more time. God damn, you don't want to load any other bank. You, there is nothing else, right? It's just base. It's just how low can you go? That's it. It don't go no further than that, I see. That's a weird fucking glitch. Unless it's my goddamn keyboard. It can't. Yeah, it's my keyboard. It's stupid as hell. It doesn't know you're switching between instances, I don't think. Dumb as hell. Brother. Which one are you changing? Give me this. Okay. Okay. No. This, that is not it. Nah, bro. Which instance are you? Yes. No. I don't even know how I was doing that. I'm trying to browse the browser and shit. I don't know why life. This gimme got down. You know what? You know why I'm here. I'm not even gonna hold you. It still said nah. It's feeling like it's filtering, but I didn't actually the filter shit. Mm-hmm. Give me that. Why was it why won't just show it in real time? Yes, and what are you filtering it out by? Why are you not? Yeah, the fucking, what the fuck? You like Valhalla Supermassive on your leads? I don't. I like, uh, I like the Shimmer lead, maybe Portal. Give me my keyboard, dog. Yeah, stop playing with me. Hell you got going on out here? Why won't it switch? File. Edit. File. Nuke it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. It shouldn't be that deep. I promise it shouldn't be that deep. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
You're still in the, you're still in that bank system. Why don't you just cooperate? You're still filtering. That's all. Um, it's a very interesting loop to run into. Twist. Lee, baby. Already got a few favorites in that pack. I ain't even know it.
because these niggas think we fucking playing with them. Like, you gotta make people really like hear stuff and feel stuff that they forgot about. You gotta remember, like, it's been over 20 years since people even tried that trick. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you don't hear that in music no more. That's like an 80s thing. They kind of borrowed it a little bit more into the 90s and the R&B stuff. Like, one song that does it prolifically, and you don't even catch it because he's just doing it the whole song is uh, Joe, All the Things Your Man Won't Do. If you listen for the lead in that song, that nigga is going off. But they, you know, they EQ'd it and turned it down enough for you to be like, the fuck is going on? You just got to remember people where we come from. Like, you got to bring them. You got to bring them. You got to bring them back to that. That's the shit we used to listen for in the fucking weird ass records to sample for one bar. Street Fighter plus X Alpha versus Mortal Kombat Kids background, and you be lit. It, 
they don't go no further than that. B Juggernaut says, that's plush. I appreciate you. Yang is plus cosign for the Supermassive on the lead by Valhalla. Robert Brown, 100. Haru says, this is fire. Robert Brown says, that's kicking MG. I appreciate it. Triple D Entertainment's in the building. Wow, gotta watch the replay. I'm still working. Peace to the tribe. Spec Ops is in the building. I can feel the flute coming in. Pause. Nailed it. I almost had the flute. But then, like, the browser thing threw me off a little bit. It, like, killed my confidence because I thought it was going to find me a nice flute. But then my keyboard, my controller, my checking and my savings, it wasn't... It didn't want me to go there, so I just took it as a universal sign not to go there. <laughs> I love going there. Damn right. Come on, bro. You still scanning the old shit, ain't you? Who got the chords, though? Come on, complete. Stop playing with me. And then we had, we come across a joint that had a piano in it, didn't we? It was that motherfucking beautiful ass GUI bullshit. Had a nice ass piano too. I was like, oh, these niggas want me to do lo fi for a living. <laughs> yeah, I found it. Short term memory for the win. And they said marijuana messes up your memory. They goddamn liars. My hands can move faster. They don't move at the same tempo. This shit is in triplets and this bitch is in dotted. It's never the same. I need it to be the same. I need to play the drums. I need something to teach my left hand with my right. They say never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And nigga, that is cap. My left hand needs to know what my right hand is doing before it does. channeling because I don't play piano 
but that's cool. If I can just grip that cord, that shit's a bitch. Told them so lection niggas, I'm right there. I'm I'm at the precipice. Y'all niggas got until July until I feel like feeling like shutting all y'all shit down next. They've been a protected group for a while. No one actually tried to go there. But I I'm, I got all the sounds to go there. Whoa, I don't even have to hit another key after that. Oh, my hands are sweating like a bitch. Oh, Lord, jeez. What? the wrong nigga the lo-fi playlist to you hear me yeah oh I see what they're doing they putting that fucking atmosphere shit in the background that shit was scaring me like, why are my ears wobbling? I ain't got time for that. Look like you about to chasm the mountain to the clouds to the hydro hydrocarbon. No, nah, what's that shit called? What's that cube called? Not the one from Hellraiser. Although I see you, nigga. Not the one from... There's always a fucking cube. I don't know. on that is crazy like it makes you play better it's like it because you can hear it respond to your shit your bullshit your let's change keys real quick no our scorpio is what i'm going to tap into my scorpio side real quick we'll go to my scorpio side real quick god damn C sharp minor, you ain't gotta threaten me with a good time. Dang, what? Stop playing with me. Brother. Put some drums down. I'll catch. I'll catch it. I'll fucking. I'll catch it. Mm 
How is that not right? How is that never right? Every time I get that loop, I never get the original one. But they be starting it on some weird ass cadences. Mm, can't do that. I guess with live drums, that sounds stupid. What's good, Mr. Now? You redacted something. It caught my eye.
so simple. Seemingly simple. Something like that. to walk down these niggas is finished it's the only trick left it's the only one left i get it though i see what they're doing you have to walk down to the root though i'll be walking down from the cord wrong do it the other way almost had me play like that in real life it'd be different for me i promise i can't though oh i can do it twice oh say less one more game Tricks, nigga. They're they're gliding. They're using portamento and slide. That's it. They don't go no further than that.
it. You switch up the cadence and they can't fuck with you. You can't, you can't, unpredictable. You can't AI that. You know why you can't AI that? Because of nigga logic. as fuck because it's the muscle memory then the cognitive memory and you can't forget nigga logic I'm putting that on a t-shirt for real I don't give a fuck who like it uh-huh. take that down
Let's go. Fucking kidding me? Are you fucking? The buffer is that goddamn bad on Massive X? I guess, and also Spirit might not want me to mess the beat up too, because I am going fucking nuts. You don't need no more sounds tonight. It's over. crazy because um i'm doing it in the key of my zodiac like there's a there there and i can't quite put my finger on it but there's a there there like if i had shifted that's like f minor or something trying to do the tempo stuff there's a lot of tempos kicks and basses are like f f sharp g g sharp he stays in that pocket of the keyboard and i try to make stuff in that and i just don't be feeling it when you take my ass to the other side of the keyboard i am motherfucking uh dark child little cousin that went to school for like programming and shit like it's crazy and that's all and that's just off that's off the freestyle for real I won't try to make no fucking struggle funk soul R&B loops definitely wasn't my mood but I'm glad that that's what's there that's I'm glad to know that that's what's going on inside of my subconscious I'm very happy I'm there with it where the fuck will we do that was the other day. Huh. We did that with halftime, right? Ain't that right?
3 now available. Why all my shit sound Japanese as fuck though? I don't even really be playing Japanese scale at all. I be playing like C minor, dog. <laughs> it just be every time I fucking find like a flute, windy type of thing, I always want to put the the motherfucking Japanese flute touch to it, and it just that's like my thing, I guess. So hopefully, I get some good rappers or singers on it one day, so that shit can come to life. Oh, that'd be awesome. Shout to Don, the second in there. I see you, Starlet, B-Boy, Octodam Shadow, everybody in the chat. He said, this man can't miss. I miss all the time. I miss so much, I just got used to not missing on camera. Exapil's in the building. Did that piano, um, Ashlight, come with the update? Yang, um, I don't know where Ashlight came from. I ain't gonna hold you and lie to you. I just know I got it on some shit. It is this one. It is specialized granular instrument that opens up the uh, blah 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 requires contact blah blah blah. This probably um is probably included in the newer complete ultimate slash thing, but I think it's it's its own little product. Since they got rid of heaviosity, they're now leaning into their own Hans Zimmer style um sound design stuff, which is cool. I fucks with it. I know, you know, everyone's trying to make beats and shit for Netflix and Hulu and shit. This is it. Like, complete is it. Like, that's it. Like, niggas be like, yo, if I get complete, the new complete, do I need anything else? Nigga, I said that is it. Like, for real. Like, for real. Like, they did it. <laughs> Everything else they don't have, I can make one shots and find one shots for, oof, guitar pedal effects for, oof. But... Like, you're just trying to make your music, like, make beats, finish beats, save beats, export beats, upload it to taxi.com or the better versions of such and see what the fuck happens. That's it. It's it. Game over. <laughs> like, fucking, <laughs> this shit is crazy. You see, I haven't went back to none of my other VSTs yet until, I, until I'm running into that brick wall. And I'm like, I need my Electra, my Access Virus. Y'all niggas is bugging. But from what I heard... The reactor stuff that's emulating those analog tones is interesting. I would want to hear it. Uh, what I have to do somehow, I don't know how to do it. I would have to run every synth through, through Zulu in order for that to work as a substitute for my other stuff. Everything would have to go through that. Uh, I wish it could go through my guitar pedal that does the drift, <clears throat> but it's mono and that's fucking ass. But yeah, if you add drift to the reactor stuff, well, if you're doing like um plucks, bass, and leads in reactor, it needs to be mono, so you're fine. But my fucking point is, the thing that computers for whatever can't do, like to emulate that feeling that analog gives you, the guitar pedal will do, the Zulu will do. Zulu doesn't fuck with the uh, motion it only fucks with the reaction to sound but the guitar pedal fucks with the motion and that's what makes it seem like oh that's a real synthesizer like bitch you guessing woo you wasn't right the b-boy says put it in the discord put which one in the discord the new ones um starlet wants to know have i messed with serum heavy most of my youtube career started with serum coming out like me doing content for YouTube for others, me and I think from that time period, Serum was the first VST I bought. Serum, then Ableton Live, I think. And I started streaming with those. And then I had the Good Hurts stuff for Lo Fi. The correct answer to your question earlier was me. But anyway, then I had the Good Hurts stuff, Ableton Live, Serum, and then Reason. Harrison Mix Bus, a little bit into Omnisphere, then into the Tone 2 stuff. I went through the guitar stuff, Ample on all them niggas and the, uh, the other people who do the guitar preset stuff, Nylon and stuff like that. Then we went on a journey with uh, 
acoustic plugins, the real, <laughs> the best sounding plugins I have that I never open because they, they obliterate the um, buffer. Um, motherfucking. Uh, yeah, that's it. Really. And the crazy thing is all the stuff I rebought over time is stuff I had in 2008. So like the only new thing I've had is serum. Everything else is old or purchased or whatever. Omnisphere's old as shit. All everything's old, 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 old. And I think that's why I kind of like fuck with Massive X presets because eventually you'll find that uh, Nas Hero preset, if you will. Uh, but yeah. Everything today is more effects, though. It's not really the sound source. And I think that, I think effects and like sound design answered the question to like, what's the best VST? It isn't one. It's not a best VST. It's what's the best com what's the best combination of matching sounds, layering sounds, and affecting sounds. It's like the the programming part is what's strong in a lot of people's stuff. It's not their music theory. Even like a lot of the people who make the like um the sample packs and stuff for drum broker, they really don't know how to play guitar. Like if you buy their packs and you get the stems, like the composition stems, and you go through them one at a time, you can tell. <clears throat> they're playing the strings like I guess we're remedial like and they're letting Studio One uh, quantize it to the chord track so imagine you're really just sitting there with your guitar just playing whatever for real it's just something that's like consistently with a cadence or a hook to it and don't matter what the notes are because we got Melodyne and all this shit right but you're just creating the the humanity of strumming a guitar right and then you take a piece of that and you align it to grid and then you follow chord track and then you do another one, a different riff. We'll call them riffs for lack of better, you know, freight, like freight their phrases is what they're called. Play a different phrase. And then you just layer them and then you go into your chord track and keep changing the chords around until you uh, stumble across something cool. And then you can, you know, play uh, MIDI chords around that. And, um, it's nuts. It's nuts how much of this stuff is uh, technical knowledge, how much of it is to know what happens to what to get what to happen. And that's kind of like the funnest part of this journey. When you finally have ahas or you crack a code where you can go from point A to point B without all the extra stuff involved, that's kind of like what I thrive off of. That's why I do the all the videos and tutorials I've done in short form. That's what that was about. It was just how exciting it was to get from point A to point B. Um, without having to spend years and years and years in side quests. Now we're kind of all caught up at this moment or juxtaposition, um, especially on the cusp of like an AI flood and a, a, a quite potentially we're having a societal flood. Um, it's kind of funny, like all the bricks are stacked up to the ceiling. I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. I pray I'm wrong. I pray like something else kind of shakes this shit up in a little bit. So it mostly matters what you do with it, not what you use. I think so. I think today, for most of the shit that I've heard or gravitate towards, especially in those little $50 plugins, all it is is they're taking one-shot layers, right? Because that's what they are. They may be tuned or pitched one-shots, but they're two different one-shots from different characteristics that blend perfectly together. You can kind of learn from that, like go into the NOAA 40 bank and get your ear trained on layers A and layers B and kind of have your own tag or identification system. So like if layer A is like vinyl static and layer B is a piano or a, a sine wave, you kind of can copy that formula into Serum. You can copy that formula into anything like in Fruity Loops, just two channels, right? Find a one shot that represents this and one shot that represents that. Studio One, you could layer like 5,000 VSTs as one combo. like. Knowing those stunts, though, going into Omnisphere, for instance, and pick your favorite preset and then turn the effects off. And then is it still your favorite preset? Probably not. Then what was it? It was the effects. Cool. So what happens if you emulate that FX chain in Omnisphere and Serum? Now, everything you create in Serum goes through that FX emulation, giving you closer to your favorite shit. It, so sound design and stuff is not really about learning how to make everything. 
of course there's fundamentals of course there's technical know-how of course you're gonna have like like the, the real fucked up shit like phase issues and all that dumb shit and modulation matrices like why do i want to modulate the flanger lfo for we don't fucking know for real but once you understand enough of it to talk about it and then to to use it to reverse engineer good sounds you'd be like oh this is the theme this is the envelope usually for bass this is the envelope usually for keys like it doesn't change much and it's just that's that fractional learning and then you're just targeting it by remaking your favorite shit so like if you have a really dope super saw lead in massive redo it in massive x and use massive x effects to copy the effects chain and serum and do the same shit in serum and then copy the effects chains from omnisphere and like just just do it just do that and then you'll learn and uncover and your brain will snap like oh that's why that worked or oh that's cool or you know that's that's i think is the the funnest and fastest way to get to it i've been studying this and you just started talking about it yeah i've tried to bring it up every once in a while Anytime I'm in, especially in Ableton, I talk about it. Anytime I do a one-shot pack, I talk about it. But I think it's worth mentioning, again, like how you're going to stand out as a producer is how you, how you put things together. Not so much what it is. That's why a lot of people who are like AI music advocates, for some reason, they're like, well, AI is not going to really do nothing by itself. You have to partner with the AI. And it's like... Maybe, maybe. The thing is that the AI requires human input. You know, AI, none of it so far, is able to map to taste. It can map to trends, but with AI, trends are going to speed up faster. Like the oscillator velocity of trends are going to speed up. Like I said, AI time stretches everything. So a lot of shit is going to happen faster. So you're not going to be able to keep up with the trends. You're going to just waste time programming AI to analyze and predict potential trends <laughs> rather than being a trend. And then being a trend, I guess, idealistically, is you having taste. <laughs> you have enough taste, whether it's AI or not, that no matter what's coming out of the output, you're able to put it in the appropriate place. Um, that's the value. And then you can transpose that from music to the office space. It's not the person who has all the knowledge based KB info in their head. It's the people who can apply it in a way that makes the office run smoother. AI can't do that by itself because AI doesn't account for energy, labor, you know, concerns and like all the human emotional spectrum that goes he more heavily into decision making, obviously, than rememorizing a bunch of facts about stuff. Like humans do everything based on how they feel. So like, AI doesn't feel nothing. It's just, hey, you want a fucking sparkly guitar riff for R&B group from 1998? And it'll look up the chords for that. It'll find a nylon guitar, Spanish guitar for it. And it'll put some cool shit together for you. But AI is not going to know that like your favorite ones is when you hit the chord a certain way and you hit the highest velocity of the string and it creates that doing sound. It's not just a chugga 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 chug. Never has been. I mean, listen to those Spanish guitar beats. Everything is in the velocity switching at the end of phrases. AI ain't gonna fucking know that. AI is gonna look at that song and see four chords, just like you know Scalar Easy Keys does. In fact, think about it. Like when you drag and drop audio into Scalar, it just gets all the chords and it gets all the little notes and stuff. And it's like it's four fucking chords. It generated twelve fucking blocks. You retarded as hell. But it's not really retarded. It just doesn't have a a, a, a AI filter thing to you know to deduce that you just want four chords. AI on the servers are the same way. Like who's gonna punch in there and says, hey, in African-American culture, they flare the guitar at the end of every four bars. Like no one, no one's doing that. They're not talking to Dark Child. I have nothing to worry about. They're not talking to Scott Storch, at least well, out of all of them, I think Scott Storch would talk to him. They haven't talked to Scott Storch yet. Maybe they are, maybe that's why I said that. But until you have that problem, AI ain't going, no. Because AI don't give you taste. AI don't give you novelty. But what AI will do is cheapen music to such a level that only the people who really love it will remain to do it. And that's the part that's probably making a lot of people nervous. 
a lot of people who've, who've came into beat culture for, I don't know, the, the community, the, uh, the esteem, I guess, that goes with it to be one of the few people in life who can make songs by yourself. Or it's just whatever. You think it's a carrot chase and the cool kids are doing it. Whatever the reason is, um, what AI automation and any of these systems really do is increase the output so much that the demand becomes so little. And then like just like now everyone's fighting for a spot on the pyramid, now you have a smaller pyramid and AI is always going to outwork or perform the humans involved. So it necessarily has to have people at very, very high quality of taste to keep it interesting. And then people who are like really, really passionate to just keep music going. Even when we break away from digital audio workstations, which a lot of people hint at, like, oh, then people just go back to live music and jamming and gigging and garaging and shit. <clears throat> Bands, basically. And then we're training AI on fucking hip-hop trap for the past 10, 15 years. And then the next 10, 15 years, we're back to, like, Blink-182 for some reason. And then now you got to tell the AI database to, you know, upload the BFD drums. You got to get Joseph Puig and everybody in the fucking room. And, the, you know what I'm saying? They'll be chasing their tails if humans run off the reservation. But even then, it's just a matter of time for AI to catch up again. So it's kind of weird that potentially we'll face a reality where new ideas just reset the clock on AI. And in that little buffer until AI catches up is your maximum window for potential earnings. And I kind of hate that because it becomes an automated economy. Um, and then the value of the definitions for the words that represent our art or our music are going to change so much. Y'all don't even know it. It'll be, it, it can get really, it, it can't get bad like it's over, but it can get really weird like fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it's like, oh my God, it's over. We can't do nothing. We can't make music. No one cares. Never that because humans are whimsical as fuck. But it might be more like, I have to go through all of this for motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Like, the shit that you already go through now, but now you gotta go through all this, plus that, and you're like, maybe it ain't, you know what I'm saying, it ain't worth doing, but we'll see. We'll see who is, uh, who's really, you know, adepts of the school of music for real. We see who's, who the magicians were that were supposed to be here. AI is just gonna expose niggas, that's all. Don't worry, you know what I'm saying? That's why I pride myself in doing this shit live, off of nothing, because can't nary a nigga tell me I'm on someone's fucking FLP file, copy and pasting someone's shit, or like, you know, in the realm of pretending I'm a beat maker, but I'm opening someone else's project to teach from. You can never say that about me. I'll be whimsical as fuck. I start with any sound, any process, any dog. I I think some something in that spirit, that's not something um, these corporate industry financial people care about. And they're right. They get way more money than I do with an inferior product, but I guess that's kind of like, if you prioritize a, a living wage or earning or exploitive marketing, whatever that box is called, if your job is just to appease your, 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 your board of members at the label and all they need is 100,000 sold per you know mediocre melodyne drop, then so be it. But if niggas really want like music that people care about and talk about naturally without being nudged or having to pretend you know you weren't at the freak nick in 94 knowing damn well they already reached out to you for the documentary so you're doing like this closeted promo for it on tiktok like all that subversive fooling people shit i think ai is just going to expose that shit make it corny dog you're gonna be looking at like a lot of people look like clowns for real they already did for real but ai the way the way ai is going to flag it for you you, you you may find yourself signing out of a lot of things, unfollowing a lot of people. So like we had that great merger with the internet, then we had the tribalism, and now we have the disconnect about to happen. Um, and I think in the beginning of the stream, I was hinting at that, um, like how interesting it is to grow up on the internet with certain people, especially certain people that focused on the same thing you did, but in their own universe and like how we're still around and how we still see things but in the future you know you, you apply that same logic like right now you know there's five to ten years on youtube where people we had a workflow like what's the new plugin what's the hot sounds who are the people making the noise and the money 
who's selling the most beats, who's in the latest interviews, um, who went to fucking Diddy's house, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who's the coolest kid from Europe that's sending your favorite black American Indian fucking lead melody flute loops and shit like that part of the that part of this chapter we're that we're over how do I say this? It was the last day of school. <laughs> so we graduated from that chapter. So the good news is something new, novel, exciting necessarily is overdue to happen in the shifting of music. I don't think that's AI I don't think that is AI, but it may be because of AI soon, like how people think outside of the, the most obvious things to do with it. We're about to head for that. We're about to have a new bubble of opportunity and excitement in music for sure. How long that lasts, I don't know. I think AI is gonna make it like seasonal, but I'm telling you now, it's about to happen. Something, something is the timing is impeccable. We got Nam out right now and some new products coming out. I gotta um follow the brothers that went out there and see what they gravitated towards to see if there's anything worth any relics worth taking into the next, you know, map. Of course I did. Of course I do. DJ Tony Tone, shout out to you. Shout out to everybody that supported the kid. Remember Soul Shot Volume 3 is out. The link is in the description of the video, mgfuture.com, of course. If you need a discount, use code 2023 at checkout. Appreciate the support as always. Like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know all that stuff. What's good? Yish in your ear. Yish, you still ain't finished that song yet, dog. I need you to go ahead and finish that. I need you to go ahead and finish that song so we can get an album, so we can get it on streaming. I need all of those type of songs recorded, mixed, and mastered, and, and, and on title by June, dog. You've been, you've been playing. I, I'm on to you. Shout out to Heath, shout out to B-Boy, shout out to Starlet, shout out to Octodam Shadow, Spec Ops, Blue Magic, it's a brand name. Everybody that's been in here. Well, we right under three hours, so let me call it short on this beautiful Friday. I pray you guys enjoy your weekend. Um, I'll be around and about in the Discord or whatever if you need to bring up any topics or anything of concerns and interest. But yeah, man, I'm gonna... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> I just know I'm done with this particular stream and I appreciate your guys' time and support. Until next time, though.